ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Secondary Theatre Company's production of Matilda the Musical. My name is Mr Wormwood, and I am one of the most reputable and established car salesmen in Dubai. So, if you need anything, just like all car salesmen, you can trust me. Before we can get started with our show here, there are some rules you need to follow, or you may end up in Mrs Trunchbull's choking. Number one, you have to switch off all those mobile phones and whack them into silence. Number two, if there is a fire, head to the top or the bottom of the auditorium. Number three, there will be a 15 minute interval where you and your friends and family can marvel in our beautiful talent and poise and buy yourself a cheeky program to remember our performance for a lifetime. Finally, if you see my pesky child Matilda, make sure you boo her off the stage. Now, sit back, relax, and remember that sometimes you have to be a little bit no a. <laughs> Above average is average. Go figure, is it some modern miracle of calculus that such frequent miracles don't render each one unmiraculous? My mommy says I'm a miracle, but look at my face and it's plain to see. Ever since the day, don't chop the umbilical cord. It's been clear that there's no for a miracle of me. My mommy says I'm a precious parody. She has never seen Richard Burley. Cause it's one thing I have to cut down on the cream But time and barely So give me more cake Take another picture of our angel From this angle over here She is clearly more emotionally developed than her peers What a deal Oh honey, look at mommy Don't put honey on your brother Stop mommy, stop mommy mother I think she thinks We'll take another How she seen his school report You got to see on his report We'll have to change his school This year just ain't falling short It's just a life so hilarious And insightful She's definitely advanced. Take a look at her. I'm competing in the biannual International Amateur Salsa and Ballroom Dancing Championship in Paris. You're getting on a plane, Mrs. Wormwood? Of course I am, Doctor. I always compete. And this time I've got a secret weapon, Rudolfo. He's part 
Italian, you know, and very supple. He has incredible upper body strength. I think we should have a talk. So, what is it? What's wrong with me? Mrs. Wormwood, do you really have no idea? Wind? Mrs. Wormwood, I want you to think very carefully. What do you think might be the cause of this? Am I? Am I? Look at my fat! Mrs. Wormwood, you're pregnant! What? You're going to have a baby! But I've already got a baby! I don't want another one! You're no longer pregnant. A baby, Mrs. Wormwood. A child. The most precious gift that the natural world can bestow upon us has been handed to you. A human being, a life, a person. A wonderful new person is about to come into your life to bring love and wonder. Oh, bloody hell! Every life I bring into this world restores my faith in humankind. Push, Mrs. Wormwood, push! I'll push you in a minute! Newborn life, I can see at a minute. This still and broken skin, their uncorrupted mind. Every life's unbelievable, unbelievably unlikely. The chances of existence, almost infinitely small. Infinitely small. The most common thing in life is love. I'm sorry, Doctor. This calls for a proper smoke. Oh, my good Lord. He's an ugly little thing, isn't he? This is one of the most beautiful children I have ever seen. Oh, my good Lord. What have you done with his thingy? His what? His, his, his thingy, his dude, or his whatchamacallit. What have you done with my son's thingy? Well, this child doesn't have a thingy because what? a boy with no thingy. Look what you've done, you stupid woman. The boy's got no thingy. This child is a girl. A beautiful, beautiful little girl. Is this still time for the biannual international sausage? No, competition's over. Finished. Done. You don't suppose we could exchange this for a boy, could is we? the worst day of my life. Oh, my undercarriage doesn't feel quite normal. My skin looks just revolting in this phosphorescent light. This gown is nothing like the semi-formal, semi-Spanish gown I should be wearing in the semi-finals tonight. I should be dancing the Tadadella, Quimo Ferra, Italiano, not dressed. With his ouching front bottom. Horrible. Miracle. Smelly little miracle. Horrible. 
daddy says I'm a whore My mummy says I'm a chumped up little germ That kids like me should be against the law My mummy says I should learn to shut my pie hole No one likes a smart mouth girl like me Mum says I'm a good case for population control Dad says I should watch more TV Sir, that's right, sir. 155 brand new luxury cars, sir. Mm. Ah! Right. Hang on. Look at this! She's reading a book! That's not normal for a five-year-old. I think she might be an idiot. Listen to this. It was the best of times. It was ah! the worst of... Ah! Stop scaring your mother with the book, boy! I'm a girl. And she keeps trying to tell me stories, Ari. Stories. That's not normal for a girl to be all thinking. I'm going to call you straight back. I am trying to pull off the biggest business deal of my life. And I have to stand here and listen to this. This? Yes, this. What about me then? I've got a whole house to look after. Dinners don't microwave themselves, you know. I am off to bleach my roots, and I shan't be talking to you till the rest of the evening. You are a little man! But I'm going to make us rich! Rich? Our rich. Very rich. Bulgarian. Hey! Shut up, Michael. Bulgarian businessmen. Very, very stupid. Your genius husband is going to sell them 155 old bangers as brand new luxury cars. But that's not fair. The cars will break down. What about the Bulgarians? Fair? Listen to the boy! I'm a girl. Fair does not get you anywhere, you thick-headed twit brain! Thank heavens, Michael here has inherited his old man's brains. Hey, son. My god! Yeah, we'll work on it. Fine. Once you earn the money, I shall spend it. But I shan't enjoy it because of the despicable way in which you have spoken to me tonight. Good day! This is all your fault with your books and your stupid reading. But that's not right. You're off to school in a few days, and I know your headmistress, Agatha Trunchbull. Horrible woman she is, used to compete in the Olympics, throwing the hammer. Imagine what she's going to do to a horrible little goblin like you, boy. I'm a girl. Now get off to bed, you little bookworm. went up the hill to fetch a pail of water so they say the subsequent fall was inevitable they never stood a chance they were written that way i wonder why they didn't just change their story we're told we have to do what we're told but surely sometimes you have to be a little bit naughty You find that life's not fair, it doesn't mean that you just have to grin and bear it. If you always take it on the chin and wear it, nothing will change. Even if you're little, you can do a lot. You must let a little thing like little stop you. If you sit around and let them get on top, you might as well be saying you think that it's okay and that's not right. And if it's not right you have to put it right but nobody else is gonna put it right for me nobody but me is gonna change my story sometimes you have to be a little bit naughty blonde hair dye, extra strong, keep out of reach from children, hmm, oil of violets hair tonic for men, yup. Dad, 
Dad, you what? know, I think I might be the smartest one in my class. Uh -huh. I got 1% on my science test, Dad. Delusions, Michael, delusions. You know, I think I might go to Harvard someday, Dad. Don't you think? Mm -hmm. Anyways, I'm gonna go watch some telly, all right? Yeah. I, need to, I need to find the controller anyways. Oh, Where the remote's it? on the couch somewhere. I don't oh. know. <clears throat> Dad? What, Michael? Your hair's green! My watch is what? Your hair! It's grey. My watch is what? My watch is what? My watch is what? Oh, my good lord. My hair. My beautiful hair. Why on earth have you done that for? Maybe you use some of Mummy's peroxide by mistake. That's exactly what you've done, you stupid, stupid man. <laughs> I've got my deal today. The, 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 the Bulgarians. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? I know what you can do. What? Oh, please tell me, please tell me. You could pretend you're an elf. You could pretend you're an elf. What are you talking about, you fool? The boy is a loony. The boy is a loony! <laughs> Mum, would you like to hear a story? Don't be disgusting! The sooner you're off to that school, the better. Pleasure to see you here in the library again. Yes, I mean, my mum wanted me to stay at home with her, but I think it's good for grown-ups to have their own space. Oh, your parents must be so proud of a little girl as clever as you. Oh, and do you tell them stories like you tell me? Oh, Matilda, I love, love, love your stories. That's it, by the way. Once upon a time. incredible feats together and people would come from miles around kings queens celebrities and astronauts and not just to see their skill but also to see their love for one another which was so deep it was said that cats would purr as they passed and dogs would weep with joy they moved into a beautiful old house and although they loved each other they were sad We have everything Everything But the one thing We do not have a child Their sadness overwhelmed them and their work became the only place they could escape the inescapable tragedy of their lives and so, it was decided for them to perform the most dangerous feat that had ever been performed. It is called... The Burning Woman Hurling Through the Air With dynamite in her hair Over sharks and spiky objects Caught by the man locked in a cage And it is the most dangerous feat ever known to man it is our destiny. destiny! Oh! Well, what happened? I don't know yet. I'll tell you tomorrow. After your first day of school.
education. My mummy says I'm a miracle. My mummy said I would be the teacher's pet. Well, this would be fun, according to my mum. That's my mum. and today is a very special day, your first day at school. Now, can anyone read what's on the board? Me, 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 oh, me, 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 oh. Very well, Nigel. Uh, I think we better leave it there, Nigel. We don't want you bursting a blood vessel on the first day. Um, Lavender? Is the first word... Tomato? Um, no, but tomato is a very good word. Yes! Matilda? I can now read words. So you can read words, Matilda? Well, yes. I had to learn to read words so that I could read sentences, because basically a sentence is just a big bunch of words. And if you can't read sentences, you've got no chance with books. And have you read a whole book yourself, Matilda? More than one. I love books. Last week I read quite a few. A few? What books did you read? Nicholas Nickleby, Oliver Twist, Jane Eyre, The Lord of the Rings, Crime and Punishment, and... The Cat in the Hat. Right, so everyone off to your next lesson. Come on. on the door. Enter. Well, don't just stand there like a wet tissue. Get on with it. Oh, yes, Miss Trunchbull. There's... In my class, there's a little girl <coughs> called Matilda Wormwood. Daughter of Harry Wormwood, who owns Wormwood Motors. Oh, Excellent man. Told me to watch out for the brat. Says she's a real wart. Oh, no, I don't think Matilda is that kind of girl at all. What is the school motto, Miss Honey? Bambinatum est magitum. Bambinatum est magitum. Children are maggots. In fact, it must have been her who put that stink bomb under my desk this morning. I'll have her for that. Thank you for suggesting it. But I didn't. Miss Trunchbull, Matilda Wormwood is a genius. Oh, nonsense. <laughs> Headmistress, I believe, it is in my opinion that Matilda Wormwood should be in the top form with the 11-year-olds. We cannot just place her in with the 11-year-olds. What kind of society would that be, honey? What about the rules, honey, rules? Headmistress, I believe Matilda Wormwood is an exception to the rules. An exception? To the rules? In my school, look at these trophies. 
see how my trophies gleam in the sunlight. See how they shine. What do you think it took to become English hammer throwing champion? 1969. Do you think in that moment when my big moment came that I treated the walls with casual disdain? No, 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 no. If you want to throw the hammer for your country You have to stay inside the circle all the time And if you want to make the team You don't use sympathy or self-esteem You just need to keep your feet inside the line Sing children, two, three, four Want to throw the hammer for your country Jenny. Two, three, four. If you want to throw the hammer for your country, you have to stay inside the circle all the time. I apply just one single rule to hammer throwing life and school. Life's a ball, so learn to throw it. Find your valley line and tear it. And always keep your now get out. Headmistress, it is in my intention to help this little girl, whether you like it or not. Nasty question asking Bulgarians! Oh, don't tell me. Telly! We're not rich. He took one look at the mileage on the first car and decided all of them cars were knackered. So I told him that the mileage was so high because of a manufacturing mistake. So you lied? Of course I lied. And they didn't believe you? And they didn't believe you. Of course they didn't believe me. Thank you, Michael. I've got green hair! I've got hair. And what's this? Hmm? Another flaming book? No, it's a lovely book. Honestly, you should read it. I'm sure you... Here's what I think of your lovely... No, it's a library book! Stop it! No! <laughs> you showed the little brat. I'm late for my dance rehearsal with Rodolfo. Rodolfo? Who's that? Do we have any super glue? In the cupboard somewhere. Oh, and whilst you're at it, why don't you super glue your stupid book to your stupid head? Ha, ha. I oh, know I'm hilarious, Michael. <laughs> Because you find that life's not fair It doesn't mean that you just have to grin and bear it If you always take it on the chin and wear it And nothing will change Even if you're little you can do a lot You mustn't let a little thing like little stop you If you sit around and let them get on top you Might as well be saying you think that it's okay and that's not right I've got my eye on you, boy And a girl uh -huh. inside your head give you a headache? I mean, it's got to hurt all squished in there. No, it's fine. I think they just fit. 
Well, I better stick around just in case they start to squeeze out your ears. I'm Lavender, and I think it's probably for the best if we're best friends. Ah! Hide me! Someone pulled a whole can of treacle onto Transport's chair. Someone told her I didn't, now she's after me. That's not fair. What? Agatha Church will decide. Sarah Guilty! You are squished. They say she's going to put me in chokey. <gasps> What's chokey? They say it's a cupboard in an office that she throws children into. It's lined with nails and spikes and bits of broken glass. There's a place you are sent if you haven't been good and it's made of spikes and wood and it isn't wide enough to sit and even if you could You, you snivelling little squib, where is the maggot known as Nigel? He's over there under those blazers. <gasps> where he's been for the last hour, actually. What? An hour? Well, yes. Nigel suffers from a rare but chronic sleeping disorder called narcolepsy. The sufferer often falls asleep without any warning. We put him under this place for safety, didn't we? Didn't we? Yes. 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 He'll probably think he's in bed when he wakes up. Is it time for school yet, Mum? Mum? Wait a minute, this isn't my bedroom at all. Oh, hello, Miss Trunchbull. Amanda Thrip. <gasps> What have I told you about wearing pigtails? I hate pigtails. But my mummy says they make me look pretty. And your mother is a oh twitch. What is she doing? What is she doing? No! Oh my God! No! What is she doing? I'm okay. Yeah. What is your name? Matilda. Matilda Wormwood. Well, Wormwood, you have just made a very big mistake. Just so you all know, she's my best friend. Wow! wow. That was That's so, so cool! cool. So cool. <laughs> Oh no, completely different cars this time, sir. Uh, green hair, sir. It was um, National Green Hair Day. A celebration of sorts. Oh, for all the wonderful green things in the world, like lettuce and snot. Tomorrow at once, sir. Oh, absolutely, sir. I'll be there. Mm -hmm. Goodbye now. Bye-bye. Now that is how you do business. No. No! I'm gonna leave it on. It looks like rain. Who is it? Oh, uh, yes, hello. M my name is Miss Honey. Matilda's teacher. Bit busy right now. Oh, it will only take a moment. Come in if you must. Hi. This is Rudolfo. He's my dance partner. We're rehearsing. 
čau. A polietali, ano, bene. What? Who is this babe? You know what interruptions do to my energy flow? What do you want, Miss Chutney? It's Miss Honey. Well, as you know, Matilda isn't in the bottom class, and children in the bottom class aren't really supposed to read. Well, stop her reading then. Lord knows we've tried. I'm in the zone, all. I can feel it in my hips. Don't waste this. Anyways, I'm not in favour of girls getting our clever pants, Miss Broccoli. Looks are more important than books. Look at you. Now look at me. You chose books. I chose looks. Good day. But Mrs. Wormwood, Matilda's mind is incredible. Mind? Her mind? You really don't know anything, do you? Somewhere along the way, my dear, you've made an awful error. You want to blame yourself now. Come along! You seem to think that people like people what are clever. That's very quaint, that's very sweet, but wrong. People don't like smarty pants what go around claiming that they know stuff we don't know. Now here's a tip. What you know matters less than the volume with which what you don't know is expressed. Content has never been less important. So you have got to be Loud! Girl, you gotta learn to stand up and stick out from the crowd. Wee! A little less, a lot more see! A little less, a lot more twang. A little less dressing like your mum. A little more ba dum bum bum, ba dum bum. No one's gonna tell you when to shake your touch. Light. Don't hide it under a bushel No one's gonna look if you don't stand out No one's gonna listen if you don't shout No one's gonna care if you don't care So go and put some highlights in your hair Cause you gotta highlight what you've got Even if what you've got is not a lie You've gotta be loud You've gotta give yourself a mission to shine To come from the ground A little less a lot more sing, a little less sh, a lot more swing, a little less dressing like your mum, a little more ba dum bum bum, ba dum bum. I look nice. You don't. No one's gonna tell you when I wiggle your bum. No one's gonna love you if you don't know the rumba. Everybody loves a little something exotic. People learning a new language is over the top. It doesn't really matter if you don't know. No. With a bit of power. The less you have to say, the louder you get it. The less you have to say, the louder you get it. The dumber you have to be, the louder convention. The less you have to show, the louder you get it. You gotta get up, you gotta get up and be loud, 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 loud. You gotta be loud. Whoops. Good day. Stop being pathetic, Jenny. Just get on your feet, Jenny. You are going to march in there and give them a piece of your mind. Leave it alone, Jenny. The more that you try, the more you'll just look like a fool. This is not your problem. 
You've not got the spine. You are a teacher, just go back to school. Are these little girl, this miracle, she seems not to know that she's special at all. And what sort of teacher? I be if I let this little girl fall. I can see this little girl needs somebody strong to fight by her side. Instead, she's found me, pathetic little me, and another dog alone sees. And Jenny is outside. And so day arrived. Everything was arranged by the Akbar sister, a frightening woman who used to be an Olympic class hammer thrower and who loved nothing more than to scare the children of the town. Suddenly, out came the escapologist. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the burning woman hurling through the air with dynamite in her hair over sharks and spiky objects caught by the man locked in a cage has been cancelled. No! Cancelled because my wife is pregnant. Oh, so it does have a happy ending. No. Just then, the acrobat sister stepped forward and produced a contract. I have paid for the post-its publicity Catering the toilet facilities. Where is my profit? A contract is a contract. You will perform on this day, or off to prison you both shall go! No, 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 no. What happens next? I don't know yet. Bye, Mrs. Phelps. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, dear. Starting from tomorrow, I shall bring in a selection of very clever books to challenge your mind. You may sit and read them while I teach the others, and if you have any questions, well, I will do my best to answer them. How does that sound? Why, Matilda, this is the biggest hug in the world. You're going to hug all the air out of me. Matilda Wormwood! Where is Matilda Wormwood? Yes, Miss Trunchbull? Aha, so you admit it, do you? Admit what? This Trans morning, this foul carbuncle sneaked like a serpent into the kitchen and stole a slice of my private chocolate cake from my tea tray. No, I did not. Miss Trunchbull Matilda's been here all morning. Sticking up for the little spitball, are you? Well, this crime took place before school started. Therefore, she is guilty. Okay, look, I stole the cake, and honestly, I was really, definitely, sort of almost thinking about owning up, maybe, but you see, I was having a lot of trouble with my belly, the Trunchbull's cake was so good that I scoffed it down too quick, and now it was beginning to fight back! I didn't do anything. You are a crook and a thief, and I shall crush you. A huge cloud of chocolatey gas wafted from my mouth and drifted full into the face of the trench ball. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Bruce Bogtrotter. Yes, miss. You liked my cake, didn't you, Bruce? Yes, Miss Trunchbull, and I'm very sorry. Oh, no, as long as you enjoyed the cake, that's the main thing. Is it? Yes, Bogtrotter, it is. Oh, well, I did. Thank you. Wonderful. Marvellous. That makes me so happy. It gives me a warm glow in my lower intestine. Oh, cook. What's the matter, Bogtrotter? Lost your appetite? Well, yes, I'm full! I will tell you when you are full, and I say criminals like you are not full until you've eaten the entire cake. But! No buts! Eat! Had Mistress Hill be sick? He should have thought of that before he decided to steal my cake. Eat! Eat! Jenny, we all get carried away sometimes, even me. Well, done, Bogtrotter. Good show. Well, come along, Bogtrotter. What? Where? Oh, did I not mention? That was the first part of your punishment. There's more. The second part. And the second part is choking! What? <gasps> no, headmistress, please, you can't! Yes, headmistress, please, you can! Do you think I would allow myself to be defeated by these maggots? Did you? Who do you think I am? A weakling? An idiot? You? No, no, please! You can't! You can't leave me to choking! Settle down, everyone. I've got a show to finish. Come on, yalla, yalla. <laughs> Here, let's start. <clears throat> I would like to begin with an apology of sorts for some of the things that have been going on here tonight. They are not nice things, and they are not right things. So, I would wish 
to state guarantorically that we do not want any children who have come to watch us tonight to try these things out for themselves. I am, of course, talking about the evils of reading books. It is normal for kids to behave in this fashion. It stunts the brain, wears out the eyes, makes kids ugly, stinky, fatty, sweaty, betty, boring, and gives them verrucas of the mind. Under no circumstances do we contone such activities, and we do so without reservoirs. Can I just ask, how many people who have come here to watch us this evening have ever read a book? Oh my good lord, there's a lot of you. I might throw up. <clears throat> so I'm not biased. Yo, what is your name? Speak up. Elena. Elena. Don't take this the wrong way. Elena. But. Bookworm, bookworm, stinky little bookworm. You read books. Worms read books. Worms are stupid. You are stupid. You read books like a worm. There. Eleanor, I've probably forgotten. Did I get it right, Eleanor? Good. Eleanor will learn. Well, not learn. She will continue to read books. But I can guarantee that she will never put her hand up in a theatre again. So, without further ado, I would like to present to you the pinnacle of our achievements as a species. The reason we evolved out of unicorns in the first place. Kelly! I give you the telly. Somewhere on a show I heard that a picture tells a thousand words. So telly, if you bother to take a look, is the equivalent of like Lots of books. Books. All I know I learned from telly this big beautiful box of facts. If you know a thing already, baby, you switch channel over just like that. Endless joy and endless laughter. Folks living happily ever after. All you need to make you wise is 23 minutes plus advertisements. Why would we waste our energy turning the pages? I want to be. And we can sit happily on a lovely baffling, watching people singing and talking and doing stuff. All I know I learned from telly. The bigger the telly, the smart man. You can tell from my big telly just what a clever pearl I am. Come on, Michael. Yeah, keep clapping. I'm gonna rip my pants. From telly, what to think and what to buy. I was pretty smart already, but I'm really, really smart, very, very smart. Endless content, endless channels, endless chat on endless panels. All you need to fill your muffin without having to really think or nothing. Why would we waste our energy trying to work out allergies? Telly. We can sit happily on the lovely baffle. Telly. Lots of slightly famous people talking to really famous people. All I know, I learned from telly. telly. The bigger the telly, the smart man. man. You can tell from my big telly just what clever hell I am. Who the dickens is Charles Dickens? Mary Shelley, gosh, she sounds smelly. Harry Potter, what a rotter. Jane Austen in the compost bin. James Joyce, doesn't sound nice. Immacure and I'll feel like spirit. When you Shakespeare, Trillium Shakespeare. Might be Dick. Easy, Grandpa. All together now, Lana, all in front telly. Telly! The bigger the telly, smarter the man. Man! You can tell from moving telly what a very hey. clever, clever fellow I am. Yeah!
Let's go, Michael. Dad, hold this way. Ah. I am very excited because this next bit is all about me. Well, it's not all about me, but I play a very big part. But you have to wait to find out. OK, so the crunch will ask for a jug of water and no, it's a surprise. OK, so on my way, I find a newt. And do you want to know more? Yeah. Oh, come on, I can't hear you. Yeah. OK, no, it's a surprise. I'm going to put a newt in the transformer's jug of water. It's going to be brilliant! <laughs> Thank goodness you're here. I'm dying to hear the next part of the story. I haven't slept a wink. Mrs. Phelps? Yes? Where's the revenge section? What? Is there a child at school who's behaving like a bully? Not a child, exactly. Do you want to hear the next part of the story? What are we waiting for? As they prepared themselves for the most dangerous feat that have ever been performed, the acrobat gave her husband a kiss. First, I escape from the cage. Lean out, catch you with one hand. Grab a fire extinguisher with the other. And blow the flames out on your specially designed dress before they reach the dynamite and blow your head off. <laughs> Three, go on. The trick started well. The moment the dress was set alight, the acrobat swung into the air. She hurled over the sharks and spiky objects. Suddenly, the padlocks pinged open and the huge chains fell away. The door flung open and the anthropologist reached out to catch his wife and the child. Oh my God, look! He grabbed her hand and the flames are covered in foam before they can both be blown to pieces. Hooray! Yes, yes, yes! So it does have a happy ending. No. No? The anthropologist it was just a touch too much foam and the hands became slippy and she fell. <laughs> she broke every bone in her body except for the ones at the ends of her little fingers. She lived long enough to have their child. Oh, things can't possibly get any worse, Matilda! I'm afraid they did. Because the escapologist was so kind that he never blamed the evil sister for what happened. In fact, he asked her to move in and help look after his daughter. She was nothing but cruel to the little girl, beating her as if she ever did anything wrong. But always in secret, so that the escapologist never suspected a thing! Let's call the police! <laughs> Mrs Phelps! It's just a story. What? Oh, of course. Sorry. Bye, Mrs. Phelps. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, dear.
to share in my triumph. Not you, boy. I'm a girl. Mm-hmm. 155 old oh, bangers on me hands. How could I possibly make the mileage go back? Hmm? I couldn't very well drive each one backwards, could I? Backwards! Mm -hmm. When, using my incredible genius and my incredible mind, I grabbed a drill, attached it to the speedometer of the first car, and whacked it into reverse. Backwards! Within a few minutes, the mileage had been reduced to practically nothing. Backwards! Then the Bulgarians show up. Expensive suits, dark glasses. Bulgarians are nocturnal. I saw it on a TV program last night. Of course you did. That was a program about badges. Um, actually, that was a show about same thing! And did it work? Did it? <laughs> Now I can afford Rodolfo all day long. But they've trusted you and you... You cheated them. Cheated them. What have we done to deserve a child like you? You know what I'm going to do tomorrow? I'm going to go down that school of yours and I'm going to tell that teacher of yours never to let you in again. And if she does, I shall have her fired. What? No. And you will never read another book as long as you live, young man. I'm a girl. Now go to your room, you nasty little creep. <laughs> <laughs> bullying. This only encouraged the woman to greater cruelties. Until one day, she exploded. You are a useless, filthy, nasty little creep. And the aunt beat her and threw her into a dank, dark, dusty cellar, locked the door and went out. Have I been so wrapped up in my grief for my wife? that I have forgotten the one thing that mattered to us most. I love you so much and I shall spend the rest of my life making it up to you. But when the little girl fell asleep, the escapologist's thoughts turned to the acrobat's sister this creature bullying children is a game, is it? Then let us see what she will do when the wrath of a grown man stands before her. But that was the last little girl ever saw of her father. What are you doing with those books, woman? They're, they're for Matilda. Not on my watch. There is an age for reading and an age for being a filthy little toad. These are toads, aren't you, Bog Trotter? Yes, Miss Trunchbull, except Bog Trotter here is now a good toad. 
sit. Miss Honey, you believe in kindness and fluffiness and books and stories. That is not teaching. To teach the child, we must first break the child. <laughs> Quiet, you maggots! But Miss Trunchbull, no one was speaking. Miss Honey, when I say quiet, you maggots, you are entirely included in that statement. Where's my jug of water? I'll get it, Miss Trunchbull. Stupid girl. Look at you, flabby, disgusting, revolting, revolting, I say. I think it's time we toughened you up with a little fizz ed. This school of late has started reeking. Quiet, maggots, when I'm speaking. Reeking with the most disturbing scent. Only the finest nostrils smell it. But I know it oh too well. It's the odor of rebellion. It's the bouquet of dissent. The smell of rebellion comes out in the sweat. And his head will get you sweaty. And it won't be long before I smell the pong of aiding and abetting. A bit of his edge will tell us who has a head full of rebellious thoughts Held, held, just like a rotten egg floats to the top of a bucket of water The whiff of insurgence, the stench of intent, the reek of prepubescent plotting The funk of defiance, two, three, the angel of one, two, three, the rot of moral fiber of once we've exercised these demons, they shall be too pooped for scheming. Some double time discipline should stop the rot from setting in. Ah. All right, let's step it up. Double time. One, two, three, four. Discipline, discipline for children who aren't listening. The miss, I need a tissue. It's an issue we can fix. There is no mystery to mastery. The art of classroom mistressing is discipline. 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 The smell of rebellion, the stench of revolt, the reek of rape, you best in plotting, the funk of defiance, the waft of reassurance, the funk of moral fiber arching. Let's bring this odor home. Sickening stench. Ah. Look what I found. A newt. I'm going to put a newt in the church. Quiet! I don't think this is teaching at all. I think it's just cruelty. That is because you, Miss Honey, you are weak. You are useless. You are, in fact, a snivelling little... Newt! Newt! Oh, Newt! You! You! Me. You cockroach! You Me. did this! You to be in this school. You ought to be in prison, in the deepest, dankest, darkest prison. I shall have you wheeled out and strapped to a trolley with a musket.
muzzle over your mouth. I shall. Have you ever wondered what I have about how when I say say red? For example, there's no way of knowing if red means the same thing in your head. It's red means in my head when someone says red. I'm not sure, but I wonder if inside my head, not just a bit different from some of my friends. These answers that come into my mind unbidden, these stories delivered to me fully written. And when everyone shouts like they seem to like shouting, the noise in my head gets incredibly loud. I just wish they'd stop, my dad and my mum, and the telly, and the stories would stop for just once. And I'm sorry, I'm not quite explaining it right. But this noise becomes anger, and the anger is light, and the burning inside me would usually fade. But it isn't today, and the heat and the shouting And my heart is pounding, and my eyes are burning And suddenly, everything, everything is Quiet Like silence, but not really of quiet like the sound of a page being turned in a book or a pause in a walk in the woods and though the people around me their mouths are still moving the words they are forming cannot reach me It's quiet and I am warm like I've said into the eye of the storm. When I tell you that there is nothing that I shan't do, no punishment I shall not, no length I shall... What? What, what are you <laughs> laughing at? What is it? What? The news! The news! It's... it's... Oh, 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 it's heading north! Oh. I've got a newt in my knickers. <laughs> I've got a newt in my knickers. I've got a newt in my knickers! Oh, please! Oh, I've got a newt! Oh. <laughs> well, that was interesting. I think we'd better all go home while we still can. Matilda? <laughs> what was that? Hilarious. <laughs> Watch. I moved it with my eyes. Am I strange? Would you fancy a nice cup of tea? What do you think it is, this thing with my eyes? I can't pretend that I know, Matilda, but I don't think we should be frightened of it. I think it's to do with that incredible mind of yours. You mean there's no room in my head for all my brains so they have to squish out through my eyes? <laughs> Well, no, not exactly, but something like that. You really are a special little girl, Matilda. I met your mother. She's interesting. What about your father? Is he as proud to have a daughter as clever as you? Oh, yeah, he's always saying, Matilda, I'm very proud to have a daughter as... That's not true, Miss Honey. He calls me a liar and a cheat and a nasty little creep. I see. Well, here we are, home sweet home. Are you poor? Uh, well, yes, 
Yes, I am, very. Don't they pay teachers very much? Well, actually, they don't, but I'm even more poorer than most because of other reasons. You see, I used to live with my aunt, but one day I was out walking and I came across this old shed. I fell completely in love with it. And I ran to the farmer and begged him to let me move in. He thought I was mad, but he agreed and I've lived here ever since. But, Miss Honey, you can't live in a shed. This roof keeps me dry when the rain falls. This door helps to keep the cold at bay. On this floor I can stand on my own two feet. On this chair I can ride my lessons. On this pillow I can dream my nights away. And this table as you can see, well, it's perfect for tea. It isn't much, but it is enough for me. It isn't much, but it is enough. Through this window I can watch the seasons change By this lamp I can read And I, I am set free And when it's cold outside I feel no fear Even in the winter storms I am warmed by a small but stubborn But it is enough for me For this is my house This is my house It isn't much, but it is enough for me This is my house This is my house you, Matilda. You see, my father died when he was young. Magnus was his name, and he was very kind. But one day, when he was gone, my aunt became my legal guardian. She was mean and cruel like you could hardly imagine. And when I got my job as a teacher, she made me pay her back for looking after me all those years. She even produced a contract that said my father had given her her entire house. Miss Honey? Is this your father's scarf? Why, yes. Yes, it is. But did he really do that? Just give her his house? I, I cannot believe that he would do that. Just like I can't believe that he would have killed himself. I think he did him in, don't you, Miss Honey? Uh, oh, no, I cannot say, Matilda. Just years of being bullied by that evil woman made me, well, pathetic. Let's go to the police! Matilda, we can't. We don't have enough evidence. Besides, my aunt is a very respected woman. Who is she? 
Matilda, I cannot say. Who is she? Matilda, I really can't. Who is she? It's Miss... Miss Trunchbull! Yes. This class is going to have a very special spelling test. Any child who gets a single answer wrong shall go to Chokey. What are you looking at? You. You. Stand up and spell. Um, let me see. Spell Newt. Newt. N. E. W. T. Newt. What? Miss Honey taught us. She's very good at teaching. Uh, nonsense. <sighs> you. Chin up and spell the one thing that you all are. Revolting. O L T I N G. Revolting. Uh, you're cheating! I taught them, that's all. With kindness, patience, and respect. How dare you bring those words into my classroom? You know nothing of teaching, and I shall prove it! You spell Amchala Caminil Septicanis Timosis. That's not even a real word, you've just made it up. Spell or go to Chokey! A. M. C. H. E. L. L. A. Oh dear. Oh dear, dear. K? It was a silent Z. You're going to choke it! Dog! D-Y-P! Dog! Uh, I've got it wrong, miss! You have to put me in chokey too! What? Cat! C-A-F! Cat! And me! <laughs> Table! X-A-B-F-Y! And me! What are you doing? Get off of there! Banana! G-T-A-A-B-L! You can't put us all in Chokey! Oh, get out of the way! W! It's all in the chokey, miss. You want to put me in the chokey too? Come now, Maggots. Do you really think I hadn't thought of that? I've been busy. An array of chokies for each and every one of you. Look, the chalk, it's lifting. What?
few days later, a letter turned up in the mail. It said that my parents' will had arrived and that I was now the owner of that beautiful house once owned by my evil aunt, Agatha Trunchbull. He was never seen again. The trophies were immediately destroyed and a new headmistress took over. And her name was Miss Honey. And it was what often said that her school was the best in all the land. Matilda was never again able to move things with her eyes. She said she didn't need a move to move things with her eyes. Don't stand there gulping. We're going to Spain forever and we are never coming back. Spain? But why? Because this green-haired twip brain saw the 155 old bangers to the Hungarian Mafia! Not on purpose. Oh my god. There! Hide! Hide! Ah! What if they damage my legs? My beautiful legs. No one cares about your legs! He's, I don't know, the Vanwood is a very stupid man and I thought I was stupid too and that is a very, very stupid and rude thing to do. Yes, but I'm afraid my father is very rude and very, very stupid. You seem smart. Sadly, in my line of work, I often don't get to meet smart people like you. Most of the people I deal with, their thinking is all backwards. Backwards! You idiot. Hello. No. Telly, Telly, Telly! I can have one of my friends teach your father some. Oh, let go, this is expensive! And one day, when he gets out of the hospital, he will be stupid, but not so rude. What do you say? It's a very tempting offer, but I think I've had enough of revenge. Your father is very, very lucky to have a daughter like you. Quick, let's go before they change their minds. Agreed. Let Matilda stay here with me. I beg your pardon. Mr. Wormwood, I would love to take Matilda. I would treat her with love and kindness, and I'd pay for everything. You mean leave our daughter here with you? Dad, you called me your daughter. Mm -hmm. Is this true? Do you want to stay here with Miss Honey? Yes, yes, I do. And I suppose you want to look after her? I do. Well, we are a bit... Short on room, so I suppose so, yes. Thank you. Well, okay, love, that's a bit much, isn't it? <clears throat> and Miss Hunter leapt into Miss Honey's arms. And hugged her. And Miss Honey hugged her back. As the Wormwoods. Ooh, ooh. And Rodolfo. As the Wormwoods and Rodolfo sped off because they had found each other. Yes. They had found each other.
Wow, 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 wow. Ladies and gentlemen, the WSO Senior Theatre Company. I know you'll agree with me. Next stop, the Dubai Opera House. Ladies and gentlemen, give your amazing children the biggest round of applause. That was phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. When I say the Dubai Opera House, I actually mean that. I can't tell you how many parents and staff members spoke to me today and during the break and said to me, do you know what? We went to Dubai Opera House and we saw Matilda a few weeks ago. And do you know what? You haven't even matched them. You were better. You were just incredible. Seven years ago, we put Matilda on, on this stage, and I thought to myself, year three and four students, we will never see a show like it ever again. And some of the cast members from seven years ago are here as senior students. And you know what? You've proved me wrong. That was the best show I have ever seen on this stage, in Broadway and the West End. Please give them a huge, huge round of applause. And I think what you've really proved tonight, and as Matilda says, even if you're little, you can definitely do a lot. And you have done this in half the time of our, ever of any of our shows. And I just think that just shows absolute grit, determination, and unbelievable talent. So, final round of applause before we say lots of thank yous to lots of people who deserve it. Okay, so with every show, there's a huge team behind the scenes that absolutely make this happen. So first of all, thank you to our wonderful production brand, band, who was led by Katie Morrill Orchard. <laughs> Special thanks to Miss Crabtree, Mr. Patrick, Enzo, Abada and Martin, who are year 10 and year 11 students. Let's give our band a big round of applause. What a performance. Also, I just want to point out to you that we had students directing this show, so students who are taking their BTEC. Student director Kay Kishwani, our student dance captain Marina, who is here, Marina, and our student assistant for our lighting was Will Smith, and also our musical director Samira Naini, supported by Hannah and Alia with the lighting as well. Can we give those students a round of applause? Thank you. And of course, our parent ambassadors who've really, really supported Fiona, Tasha Allen, Dima, who've supported with the set, Victoria and the Hot Media team who supported with the program and the trailer. Thank you so much. Big round of applause to those parents. Thank you. We also have a fantastic partnership with Erdang International and Gemma McMill have really supported through this show. And also I'd like to really say thank you to the VIPs that have attended tonight and our new patron, Taryn Callender, who is actually from the West End, who've also supported this evening. Thank you to you all. And before we go on to our incredible teachers and performing arts staff, students, what do you say to your parents? Because your parents have been here, supported you, helped you learn your lines, helped you sing the songs, bring you here every weekend and after school. Can you give your parents a big round of applause, please? And then finally, of course, to our amazing performing arts team. So poster design, Lydia, hair and makeup, Amy McLaughlin, set design, Mike Evans, sound tech, tech Chris Kermuth, props, Ella Sprague, costumes, Olivia Davidson, student band director and mic tech, Morgan Charleston, assistant director, Sophia Shakuri. Big round of applause, please. Thank you. And of course, the phenomenal director of this evening. Where is Jodie Quirk? Jodie, incredible. Up you come, please, Jodie. Here she is. Jodie, you have such an incredible talent. Thank you. This has just been absolutely amazing. 
Okay, before we have one more song, the students have asked for the mic back because they also have some thank yous. Thank yous of their own that they haven't rehearsed. They've done this all by themselves. So I'm going to hand them back to Rian before the final song. Thank you. Thank you, Miss O'Regan, for your kind words. Um, I think we can all agree that this production wouldn't have happened if it weren't for these people. Uh, so can I please ask that if your name is called, if you can make your way onto the stage, um, of course, if you can, Mr. Kermuth, um, <laughs> as we have something for each and every one of you. Firstly, can I ask, oh, I will step out of the way. Firstly, can I ask Mr. Evans, Miss McLaughlin, Miss Davidson and Miss Sprague, who without their help behind the scenes and backstage, I don't know how half of these scenes would have come together. There she is, she's coming down, she was in the audience. Okay, um, secondly, to Mr. Kermuth, Miss Charleston, and of course, Miss Orchard, who without the countless singing and band rehearsals and amazing mics, we wouldn't have sounded as good as we did tonight. <laughs> Mr. Kermuth, I think we'll run yours up to you, if you don't know, need to come down. <laughs> Next, to our choreographer and musical director, Mikey J. Heath and M Gemma McMill from Erdang, who brought the professionalism and the dedication to our show. Is Mikey in? There he is. Okay. <laughs> Our assistant director, Miss Ash Curry, who has not only helped with everything within the show, but has been up there in the box doing all the amazing projections you see behind us. So can we have a round of applause? <laughs> She's coming down. And lastly, Miss Quirk, our director, who without her, this show would have never been this brilliant. I think I can say on the behalf of the whole cast, thank you for everything you've done. Can we have one more round of applause for this amazing cast and the amazing team? I think you'll agree with me, parents. We want one more song, don't we? One more. Okay, students, you ready? One more song.
the WSO Theatre Company. Thank you.